Okay, now I think we have all the technology with us. Uh, welcome everybody to this webinar. Um, we're supposed to talk about how to create flow in your integration projects. Uh, together with me, I have uh, Gustav Rosén, CEO of Antiros Integrations. Uh, can you hear us, uh, Gustav? I can't hear you. <laughs> there you are, at least. <laughs> now can you? Good. Can you hear me? <laughs> Is the audio good? Yes, sounds perfect. Okay, great. So uh, take it from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome everybody again, and welcome Gustav. So we're supposed to to talk a bit about um, uh, what we have learned during the 10 years as integration specialists and uh, that's why you're on the stage uh, to, to share with us what uh, yeah your experience so please um, give you everybody a short introduction to yourself and um, take it away okay i hope you can see my screen shared now uh, my name is Gustav Rosén uh, i've been working as an integration architect uh, for the last 15 years uh, I've always had a mission to um, do integrations. Uh, I ex uh, acknowledged that early on in, in the IT industry, that it was a, an area that captured my attention. I really like the mix of uh, uh, the business change uh, that is happening with integration and also uh, the soft parts, like getting people to collaborate and organize around, uh, around an integration. So that's what I do. Uh, and Antidos has been around now for, for 10 years, uh, and we're really happy to be able to share our experiences uh, from the clients uh, that, we, that we have, and also to be able to share with you today some exciting news regarding our new SaaS, Stalify, and also certified integrator uh, training for professionals. So that's a really short introduction uh, for me. I just want to say that if the, if anyone has any questions, just post them in the question tab or in the chat, and we'll look at those in, uh, at the end. Okay, very good. I, I hope you can see my screen now, uh, and I'm going to do some demoing as well. So we're going to switch uh, switch to Stalify in a few moments. But first, why are we uh, hosting this webinar? Uh, well. As you all know, most of you are in the IT industry that is participating today. Uh, digital transformation is ongoing and is more and more coming to top of mind uh, of our leadership teams. Uh, in a recent survey, Connectivity Benchmark Report, that was released just a couple of weeks ago, um, there was really nice statistics around uh, how many companies that are actually doing initiatives in the, the digital area. And now, Basically, what you can conclude is that almost any project right now is a digital project. It contains some type of digital components that will digitally transform the business that is executing the project. So as you can see on the left-hand side, uh, basically 99% of businesses are running uh, initiatives this year for digital transformation or about startup initiatives. And then one can ask, why are we doing this? And as you can see on the, on the right-hand side, it's still the traditional reasons. The top three is to modernize legacy systems, to get more out of the information, basically, that we have. Uh, number two is to be able to migrate uh, to the cloud, to be more efficient, to be able to scale better. And number three is about automating business processes. And that has basically been the same thing for the last five to 10 years. But then we see a couple of contenders uh, introducing new products and services faster, that is quite interesting. Um, to be able to, to do that today, you need to run digital initiatives uh, because most businesses are becoming digital. Um, but there's challenge, challenges in this, of course. Um, the survey also shows that 85% um, 
of all these organizations that are in uh, initiatives today and transformation, they are experiencing challenges due to integrations. Um, as a matter of fact, the number of systems that is integrated in a company is dropping year over year. Right now, it's only 28% of applications in a company that, that is integrated at all. And that's, that's not so much because of the technical challenge, but it's more of an organizational and collaborative challenge, getting people to work between different tech teams and so on. That's really hard. And the effect of that, as you can see on the right-hand side, is that uh, most IT leaders, uh, almost 60%, were not able to deliver according to business expectations last year. So most IT leaders said that I could not deliver all the projects that's what, that was asked of me due to resource shortage or due to challenges in the running projects. And then it's interesting to ask, why do we have these numbers? Why are we having challenges uh, in the project space? Why can we not move as fast as business wants us to move? Uh, one could think that it might be that we're lacking technology, but, but it's not that cause. It's rather three main pain points uh, that was deduced from this survey, service. And the first one is that we continue to have fussy business objectives in our initiatives. Um, we experience that we're out of sync with stakeholders. A stunning 80% of project participants said that our requirements is out of sync with the rest of the business. And last but not least, we uh, do excessive rework, uh, not because we're working agile, deliver prototyping and so on, because things are changing when we're running our initiatives. And then we need to rework uh, and we need to meet new requirements in our, in our projects. So how to deal with this? Well, I, uh, I personally have a, have a view that projects have changed char character the last year. If you look back on how a project looked a while ago, we were, for instance, uh, we wanted to deliver a digital experience to some user group um, of a certain business process that was in scope of a project. And what that meant is that people uh, powering that process, uh, they needed to participate in some kind of change initiative. And they were powered themselves by technology. So administrative systems uh, where they worked with inputting and outputting data. But that has changed. Uh, we have gone through a digital transformation, not only tech-wise, but most companies, as I said before, are now becoming IT companies. So there's a shift between people and technology in these pictures. So now most of us are actually running and uh, changing and working with technology, and that is the business process. Uh, as examples, we're not, we're not meeting our, our banks over desks today. We're meeting them over internet banks. We're not renting movies anymore over desk. We're renting movies online, et cetera, et cetera. Almost any industry, any company is going through this. Uh, so what's, what's the edge in this webinar? Uh, what are we focusing on here? Well, what this also means is that almost all projects being run today do have some element of integration in them. Because what we do is that we try to break down these projects in smaller pieces. It means that we need to get our technology to integrate with technology in other areas of the business. For instance, a uh, e-commerce shop need to talk to the ERP system or the order management system or the warehouse management system. So projects are not necessarily becoming more and more complicated, but they're becoming more and more complex because we need to talk to more and more people we need to cater for more and more of context uh, when we run our scopes. So then it becomes quite obvious that we really need to focus on having clear business objectives, uh, on having uh, stakeholders in these areas that are in sync, and also that we need to start reusing work. Uh, we cannot pull everyone together from our areas and create something new all the time, but we need to start building on what we have in, in small, small increments. So that, that's basically the challenge, and that's the reason for why, um, unfortunately, more and more projects are experiencing delays or a higher costs than expected. So what we do as a company, uh, uh, just to give a wider view, is that 
we uh, have a prom promise to our clients about doing integrations the right way and then achieving a 10 times faster integration. And we have three leverages when we do this. Uh, the first one uh, that we'd like to focus on is uh, the landscape. So basically, don't do integrations that you don't need to do. Look at what you have and try to reuse what you have. And there's a stunning figure there, but what it shows is that if you have control over your application network, if you know what your application consists of and services and so on, you can avoid up to seven out of 10 integrations. So if you flip that coin, what it also means is that if you don't know what you have in your landscape, seven out of 10 integrations delivered will be in vain. They will be redundant. So they could have been avoided. Next one is in the middle, and that was that is basically what this webinar is about today. That is about working the right way in your integration project. So saving uh, time and effort in your project by executing with the right method. Last one, but not least, is uh, uh, the also exciting tech area. So to get the right integration technology in place, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel when doing connectivity and transformation and error handling and event streaming and everything that you want to do in your IT landscape. So there are uh, quite a few um, organizations that attack this from the left-hand side. So when you have an integration challenge, you start looking for a technology that can solve your need. But what we uh, propose, and that's the first key takeaway here, is that you should try to attack it from the right-hand side. So look at your landscape, try to organize your services, look at your project, what you want to achieve, do you have the right method, do you have people engaged the right way, and then what type of technology do you need? And the solutions that we bring to the table, uh, it's very exciting now. We, we launched this in October uh, last year. Um, it's a SaaS application for uh, application networking. Um, I'm going to show you that one soon. And that is basically to create quickly a view of your landscape and what you have. Second point is to enable your developers uh, to be able to execute in the project in a good way. So using certified integrator, uh, that's a professional standard that was released in 2018, not only from Antiros, but by collaboration of a couple of integration companies. It's becoming an ISO 17024 professional standard. So basically what Cisco did for network technicians uh, 15 years ago. And then, of course, um, you need to have the right technology in place in order to do some integrations, uh, if it's APIs or if it's streaming events or what you need in your challenge. But as I said, we like to attack this from the right-hand side, and today we're going to focus on, uh, on that side, and especially the 50% the in the middle, moving twice as fast in your project. So. Uh, what we bring to the table here that you can take away uh, as a second point is five keys for integration project success. Uh, this is stuff that you need to cater for in order to get your, uh, get your team flowing in your project. So the first one, uh, that's a quite interesting one, uh, is visualizing your scope. So seeing is believing, right? If you know what you're about to build, and if you know how that relates to the larger context, then you're much more certain on your project success and how to relate to your other stakeholders. And uh, this is where Stallify comes in. Uh, traditionally, integration tooling has been built like black boxes for wiring uh, systems together. What we bring to the table is a modeling tool and a collaborative tool where you can gather your developers in an initiative or in a landscape and you can uh, collaborate around your application network there. So uh, to give a quick view, uh, Stallify is something that you can sign up on today and try out. It's a freemium. And if you have a typical scope of a project, for instance, a web shop at the top that needs to talk to uh, an ERP system, a CRM system, and a PIM system, what Stallify is for is to get that visualized quickly uh, to describe your references in purple here and your services in blue and to be able to communicate that to the different stakeholders of the project and also to manage that change through this tooling. So it's not an integration platform. 
it's not an integration technology uh, for a distributed team. It is more of a collaborative tool to run the integration uh, project and to run your landscape. So you can use 10 different technologies for integration, and you put Stalify on top and, and power your change, basically. Um, so if we look at this project, it, it looks a bit complex and messy, right? But if I, if I start by um, turning off the services here and maybe hiding the subsystems, it, it, it becomes more clear. We see four systems here that need to talk to each other. And then again, uh, uh, showing the subsystems, I see that there seem to be a, an order module of the ERP system that's in play here. And there's a logistics model and a finance module. And there's also a customer module. So there's communication between the ERP and the CRM. There seems to be communication with the pricing catalog here from the web shop. Uh, there's a product catalog and a media catalog that is not involved here. So if I uh, turn on the reference here, uh, I see that there's a couple of calls that needs to be made in this project. Uh, there seems to be seven different calls, uh, seven different dependencies that we need to manage in this project. So it's about getting a subscription of a price catalog. Uh, it's about uh, getting a price. It's about uh, putting a consumer, a customer, into the CRM system. Seems to be something about getting an invoice, uh, getting shipping info, and this one is the crown jewel, posting orders, so doing the order capturing and sending that to the ERP system. And what we see here uh, is a quite quick way of visualizing then the scope. And turning on the services here, uh, we see that there's a couple of interfaces. This could be APIs, could be streaming events that we need to realize or reuse in order to execute this project. Um, so, for instance, this publication of the prior cat that needs to be delivered before the subscription can be set up from the web shop, uh, and same for the for the other services. And what we have done here is to create a quick and simple model of our scope, and we have visualized that for our for our users. Uh, next point uh, I would like to bring is that. This is good, right? But this you can do this in Visio, you can do it in Lucid Chart or any other tooling. Um, what you cannot do in Lucid Chart and, and Visio is to build uh, on top of existing solutions. So what you do in Stalify is that you either import your existing landscape or you quickly model your existing landscape. We have a method that allow you to do that uh, in only three days uh, based on distributed documentation. And then you can take the same project scope, that web shop, the CRM, the ERP, and the PIM system, and relate that to what you have already in your application network. So I can show you uh, an example of this here. If you take uh, an application network uh, of a medium size, this one is uh, something like uh, 50, 60 systems, and you look at the services, uh, then it might be 200 services that you have in your organization, medium-sized company. And you want to see the references as well. So that's the calls being made between the different applications. And what's good when you have this data, it's not only that your project team can relate to this data in a really good way to see the dependencies that they have uh, from a certain application to another application. Um, so you can see the interconnectivity, zoom in on that filtering and searching and so on. But what's important here is that you can start uh, massaging this data, uh, showing different views of the data. So for instance, if I, if I want to see a dependency uh, graph and see what are my most connected systems, um, I can do like this. I can start analyzing my application network. I can quickly uh, find redundant services services that are not reused and i can drive the change long term in a more strategic way in my landscape um, so that's the first point uh, visualize your scope uh, in in the project scope that you have but also in relation to your context that's quite uh, quite important uh, next thing is that you want to organize your team and resources so as I said, we're taking this from a people perspective and collaborative perspective before technology. So the way to do that is 
to start engaging with the solution. Um, I can show you in, in, in this picture. So if I hide now uh, the services and references and I turn on the engagement, I see that there's three people that needs to work together in this, in this project. There's a Jonas, there's an Ellen, and there's a Gustav here. So Gustav is running uh, running the show uh, in the RP area. Ellen is uh, uh, running the show in the web shop and the CRM area. And Jonas is uh, doing the same in the PIM area. So these three people, uh, they need to take ownership and understand that these services and references, uh, they need to be delivered. Of course, they might have API developers and event developers behind them that work in the different teams, but they're point of coordinations. And uh, you can also add, of course, teams, divisions, the developers, uh, and, and relate them and stallify to your two applications. So uh, when we have identified uh, our users uh, that are engaged to the systems, we can uh, ask ourselves, how do we enable uh, these developers or system owners to execute with 50% reuse. And our answer to that is that we think that uh, one should get certified. Um, so certified integrator, just to put that very briefly, you can find more info on certifiedintegrator.com. It exists for IT professionals, and then it's a six hour certification, uh, and it gives you basically the green card to play on the integration golf course. So it's no advanced stuff, it's the 10 critical points that you need to do in integration and integration projects. There's a one hour quick session for business professionals. If you have stakeholders that need to understand how to place integration requirements, understand what integration is. And uh, what you get out of this is that you get certified project members uh, that understand the requirements of integration and integration scopes and how to deal with that scope together. And then just to, to mention a few points, uh, it's about getting IDs and patterns. You get that directly in Stallify in the team, but then starting to model the information, the mediation, uh, the scalability of the services, uh, how to relate the security, reliability with transaction handling and persistence and so on. Also operability with uh, handing over things to a DevOps team for monitoring and, and uh, logging, et cetera, but also future proofing or semantic versioning with upgrades of services and so on. And in these, uh, uh, in these points, there's sub points uh, that you can, um, you can relate to in the project and you can, for instance, decide that, okay, let's do a simple release first, we prototype things, and then we leave scaling, uh, security, reliability, and operability out. So we focus on functional parts. And then in a next iteration, we add the scaling parts. In a third iteration, we add the security parts, et cetera, et cetera. And you can navigate really clearly through your project with these points. Um, next one is that we think it's really good that not only to, to, to certify and to align around a clear standard, but to, to assure that that one is used and that you can track how it's used between the different members. So in Stallify, there's actually an implementation of Certified Integrator. You can go to a certain service, uh, for instance, this one, post order to the ERP, and you can check out uh, the status of that service. So in the middle of project, if you ask yourself, how far have we gone in the development of this? Uh, how ready is this API to ship to production? If you see here, it seems like it's uh, 80, 81% compliant with CI, and it's 98% completed. So in this case, it seems like there's a uh, API developer here that think that um, we don't need, for instance, scaling uh, in this release. We can put it in a next release. So it's shipping quite soon, but it's without scaling implemented. I can show you this quickly here. If I do like this, I can... Uh, Take the systems and we look at this one, post order to ERP. And you see that it seems like reliability. Okay, it's not transacted. Uh, it's not persisted, but that's not needed evidently. But it's availability assured and it's predictable. 
And for the scaling matters, we have not set performance and capacity limits. There's no scaling change cases added, uh, and the bottlenecks have not been analyzed. Okay, so it's a really quick way of ensuring that your resources know what to deliver and that you as a stakeholder in the project know where are we in the project, how much do we have left. As a last point, uh, it's a critical key here is to stay on top of requirements and changes. As I said in the beginning, um, there will be requirement changes. We are working in an agile fashion. We are taking in new things, sprint per sprint. So how do you stay on top of requirements and changes in an integration scope like the one I showed? Well, uh, going back to certified integrator, uh, there's 10 plus five points for integrations there. Um, point number four is about mediations and how to handle requirement change. And then there's a concept of flow leading that we um, really think that uh, a lot of people should be working with in projects because um, we have good methods for project management, but we don't have so much good <laughs> methods for integration management. So flow leading is basically an A to E approach uh, where you lead the flow changes happening in your project, where you lead the, the, the changes that need to be applied to your API or to your event stream. So the way that it works is that the receiving party uh, sets the requirements. It's a green lamp there. And then B, sending party adapts. So creating uh, maybe an update to the API. Uh, again, the receiving party assures that the right test cases uh, is there. And there's, of course, all the details that you need on what that is if you take the certified integrator uh, certificate. And then uh, you can do the development changes. So sender and receiver or consumer and provider of an API, they can do the change together and upgrade uh, what's needed for the project. And then as a last step, receiving end, it's usually the consumer of the API, verifies by saying yes. I can tick off my test cases and it works. So this A to E approach, it can be used sprint per sprint in your initiatives. Uh, it can be used per API or per flow. And then of course repeated when changes come. And what go what's good here is that you should know in every change, just regarding if it's just a field added or if it's some other stuff that you update in your integration, where's the ball? Uh, who, who has... Uh, uh, who has the ball right now? Are we in step A, C, or E in this revision? And if you have a scope like the one I showed, maybe with seven integrations, uh, you typically flow lead over seven integrations at the same time in a project, and you step through A, B, C, D, E for each revision of those integrations. And the way that we have chose to implement it and recommend our customers to run it is to, again, use Stallify for structure and collaboration. So you model your uh, challenge, uh, you have links and notifications, and you power the change by Stallify. And then you have all your details, uh, the specifications, uh, test cases, etc., in your regular wiki or other dynamic doc tooling. So you keep the details there, and you power the change from Stallify with notifications and links. So we think that this has been a really successful approach uh, the years that we have used it, and we recommend as many as possible to use flow leading. And it's something that you will learn if you take the certificate uh, for certified integrator. So that was a really quick walkthrough, uh, half an hour, on uh, how to deal with the challenge uh, of uh, doing uh, integrations in your projects and getting flow in your project. And just to reiterate, uh, we like to address this challenge starting from the right-hand side, ensure that you have control over your landscape, uh, ensure that you have control over your project challenge, then go to the middle, ensure that you have the right enablement, certified integrators in your team uh, that know how to collaborate and what to do in the project, and then ensure that you have the right technology, if it's event streaming, APIs, or whatever technology you need for integration. And together, these three makes out 10 times faster integration uh, in your company.
Uh, so thank you for for listening into this. And now uh, we have a discussion session for 15 minutes or more if you want to have it. Uh, but that was that was half hour. So thanks for me. Thank you, Gustav. Very nice. Very nice. We have a few questions already, and I think that we can get right on with those. And uh, the first one is: What is the difference slash advantage over a dependency discovery module in a CMDB? That's a startup question, I guess. Yeah, C CMDB uh, is really great tooling that is typically used for your infrastructure assets. Um, you can use a CMDB for managing your application network, but uh, Stallify has been um, natively built for application networking and developer collaboration. So for me, CMDB is more of a registry tool used for any purpose. Stallify is more for application and developer networking and collaboration uh, in that space. Super. Thank you. Um, regarding certified integrator, is there a way to access the content shown in the webinar? Yes, uh, you can access the content and the full standard at certifiedintegrator.com. Um, so you just uh, uh, go in there and browse your way to the content. Um, the standard in itself is quite short. It's, it's just a one pager with the 10 plus 5 points in paragraphs, but there's training material available that's also uh, openly available um, that you can you can look at. And then, of course, um, you get that same training material if you take the certification. Great. So feel free to ask questions if you want to, to go start here. Um, I don't have anything else in my pocket here. One thing that might be interesting to know about, though, is um, um, that many people think that a continuously updated view of the application network in a quite large company sounds like, yeah, an utopia. <laughs> um, that's not regarding projects, but it might be interesting to hear your thoughts about that. Is it possible to achieve? Yes, uh, it is. It is possible. Uh, if you if you have a large application network with a lot of uh, applications it's i would say already when you have uh, maybe 20 or 30 applications and maybe 100 apis it's impossible to manage that centrally so the whole idea in stallify is that you divide the network up into pieces and you give the responsibility to the system owners of uh, managing their apis and services so in in this landscape there might be 50 people that work on this together there's not one enterprise architect sitting centrally. But there's 50 system owners that know their services, that know their reference points, and that manage that uh, in Stallify. And then there's two ways of doing it. The first one is, uh, of course, to do it in web UI. Uh, it's quite fast and simple. It takes maybe five minutes per month to do your uh, revisions, if you have any. But a more, more uh, developer-centric approach is to use the APIs so in the same way as uh, we're starting getting used now to using API portal APIs from our DevOps tool chains, so we push new new specifications, etc., to our API portals, you can use exact same approach for Stallify. And then there's not Swagger files, but there's Tagger files uh, that describe the dependencies. Um, so when you do changes, uh, you can have your tagger file. You can check that into your source code repository and also push it to the Stallify API at change. Or you can use the web UI. It's the same thing. Good. That's where the collaboration comes in. <laughs> Great. If we don't have anything, any questions left, um, thank you very much for joining. And thank you, Gustav, for a great presentation. And um, reach out to us uh, and, and try out Stotify at stotify.ntiers.se. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.